Good afternoon, this is your Solent Journalism Update at 1.30. I'm Millie Jenkinson. Russian troops have continued to move into Ukraine after launching an invasion overnight. Within the last hour, the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, has addressed the nation, giving more details of the attack. Shortly after four o'clock this morning, I spoke to President Zelensky of Ukraine to offer the continued support of the UK. Because our worst fears have now come true, and all our warnings have proved tragically accurate. President Putin of Russia has unleashed war in our European continent. He's attacked a friendly country without any provocation and without any credible excuse. Innumerable missiles and bombs have been raining down on an entirely innocent population. A vast invasion is underway by land, by sea, and by air. The Prime Minister there speaking earlier. I'm joined now by our correspondent Ben Axon, who's following the Ukraine story for us today. Ben, what's the latest? Thank you, Millie. Yeah, just you just heard there, shortly before 6 a.m. local time, Russian President Vladimir Putin announced military measures have commenced in Ukraine. Uh, footage has emerged from the Donbass region uh, showing airstrikes on suspected military targets. Uh, of course, the situation is moving rapidly. Uh, Ukraine Interior Minister Anton Gerashenko has said a countrywide invasion has begun, uh, with footage showing smoke rising from targets in Kiev, uh, the Ukrainian capital. Um, we have obviously now heard from Prime Minister Bons- Boris Johnson, rather, whose words were incredibly strong, Millie. Yeah, so what what does this mean going forward? What What can we expect here? Well, for Ukraine, it doesn't look good at the moment. President uh, Volodymyr Zelensky has offered weapons to all civilians who want to fight. Uh, It's very dark indeed. Uh, Lithuania, a country that doesn't border either Ukraine or Russia, has also declared a state of war. Uh, Boris Johnson will speak at the House of Commons at 5pm today, is expected to talk around sanctions, possibly looking at the oil and gas imports from Russia and proposed military response. You can hear about all of this, Millie, on the live blog, solentjournalism.co.uk. Thank you for coming in. COVID rules are being scrapped. As of today, we will no longer have to self-isolate or wear face masks. The Prime Minister announced an end to restrictions in England on Monday. Despite these changes, the NHS are encouraging the public to continue to isolate and take precautions. Even with the restrictions dropping, PCR and lateral flow tests will no longer be free for most people uh, after April the 1st. We asked you what you thought about these changes. Yeah, so how do you feel that like people don't have to self-isolate anymore? They can just walk that's, around? That's just dumb. I guess it's just, that's just stupid, honestly. Um, yeah, I think obviously just best to keep safe, obviously limit the chances and then obviously live a safe life. Loads of people that I've spoken to, especially in my course, have said they're still going to do it. Everyone in my work still says they're going to do it, but I guess it depends on the wider population if they choose to. And if you, uh, if you caught COVID, so obviously you don't have to self-isolate now, you can just come into uni, whatever, but do you think you would self-isolate? Yeah. 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 I mean, I will still stay at home, even if I don't get paid, but I will still stay at home, yeah. Some people might not self-isolate because work, they won't pay them, but some of them they will because it's like, okay, we are going to think about other people. Meanwhile, a local retailer has fallen on hard times during the pandemic. Local vegan store Rice Up Whole Foods are waiting to see if they are able to remain open after their fundraiser closed. The fundraiser was opened in December and closed last Sunday. They've raised around £12,000 but are waiting to see if they're able to continue to be open. They fell on hard times during the pandemic and increases in rent which led them to turn to public for help. Southampton is bidding to become a child-friendly city. It's part of a global scheme together with UNICEF. The goal is to ensure that all children have a meaningful say in what decisions are being made locally. Meanwhile, Hampshire police officers are calling for knitters to help make teddy bears for children who are victims of domestic abuse. The bears, called Bobby Buddies, are gifted to children to help officers communicate with them. If you would like to get involved, you can visit the Hampshire police website. Sport now and Solent University's basketball team, the Solent Castles, won the quarter-final match in the BC... 
BUCS Championships. They beat the Manchester Mets with a final score of 79 points to 62. Castrol's head coach, Sylvain Donoud, spoke to us about reaching the semi-finals for the first time and how the team is able to do so well. So that's a difficult question. We're, try to, well, we're working together three times a week and, uh, and we're trying to, uh, to share the ball a maximum. So we've got lots of talent in this team. It's, it's not only me, it's not up to me, but it's as well the players gelling and working together and uh, just trying to put some, some plays, some sets. And, uh, and, and share the ball because everybody can score. We've got lots of, uh, of, of good players. In two weeks, they'll be entering the semi-final. Southampton is to host Norris City at St Mary's Stadium tomorrow evening. The Saints are looking to continue their success after a 2-0 win against Everton last weekend. The kickoff is at 8pm. That's all from us for now. You can find all of our stories and more at solentjournalism.co.uk.